unity is so important in the body of Christ. Tony Broom Ministries now presents the following Bible sermon entitled, Step Up to the Unity Plate. Somebody said, it's time for, they'd call somebody's name, John or Jim or whoever, to step up to the plate. Sometimes we tell our children that. Boy, it's about time you stepped up to the plate. Became a man and got yourself a job. Or tell the lady it's about time you shaped up, became a woman. It's time you step up to the plate. Today we're going to step up to the unity plate. I invite you to step up to the unity plate. The word unity appears three times in the King James Bible. Once in Psalms 133 and twice in the book of Ephesians. Psalms 133 is a beautiful psalm. It is one of those songs of degrees. There are several of those that are mentioned in Scripture, and you can start in Psalm 120 and read through some of those. And at the heading of them, at least in the older Bibles, it would say a song of degrees, and sometimes it would say a song of degrees of David. When you think about degrees, well, degrees are just like on a thermometer or just like on a compass or whatever it is. So many degrees. It's not like a degree in the college. It's degree intervals. How much you would move up or move down. The songs of degrees, it, sometimes it's called songs of degrees or ascents. You're ascending. You're going up somewhere. Thank God we're going up somewhere. Amen. The old black song said, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Amen. We're going up somewhere. The songs of degrees would start at the bottom of the hill. They had in their mind, mind's eye to get up to Jerusalem. The top of the hill, you're going to make it to Jerusalem. You're starting in the lower hill at the bottom and you're going up to Mount Zion. You're going to get to Jerusalem. One of these days, it might take you a little while to get there, but you're getting up to Jerusalem. That's what the songs of degrees are about. And this is one of them. Song of degrees or ascents of David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It said it's good. That wonderful Hebrew word, tov, is good. God said when he made the heaven and earth, he said it's tov. And when he got through making everything, he said tov ma'od. It's not only good, but it's very good. How good, tov, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. This is what you call family harmony. When you can dwell together in unity, it's good and it's pleasant. It feels good to be able to come together in one accord. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were all together in one place, in one accord. Amen. Suddenly there comes this sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like fire, sat on each of them, chose them individually and then collectively, and then they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. It happened because they were in unity. There's nothing that cannot be accomplished if we come together in unity. Even in an evil purpose, things can be accomplished when people come together in unity. People think that it has to be in the Holy Spirit, and of course it should be. That's the real unity God blesses. But even bad people, even bad things can come together in unity. And if it's not checked, if it's not held in control, it will get out of control, and they will be able to accomplish about anything they want to. We've seen that in the current situation which we're living in. They can come together in an evil way, and you can see what can be accomplished. Just because things are accomplished, that doesn't mean that it's good. That doesn't mean that God is stamping His approval on it. But it's coming together anyway. Just because people are united 
They can be united in an evil way, and still they're united and things can happen. Same thing happened at the Tower of Babel or Babel. They were intending on building this tower up to heaven. And God said, I'll go down now and see what they're doing. He said, because nothing shall be restrained from them. Their purpose which they have begun to do, they will accomplish it. So the only way that he would stop it, that's not the only way that he could have, but the way that he did it was to confound their languages. The day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit gave them tongues, and that was a blessing from God. And here at the Tower of Babel, they spoke in tongues. That's why they call it Babel, I guess, because they babbled around. Nobody understood what the other was saying. And George said, bring me a hammer, and Jim thought he said a saw, so they couldn't get anything else done. They were scattered abroad, and they were not able to finish that which they had started because they were not in unity. But if brothers dwell together in unity, it is good and it is pleasant because you have family harmony that is getting together. If you have friction in the physical family, it's hard to do anything. Jesus said a house divided against itself cannot stand because it's divided. If you're together in unity, wonderful things can happen. Unity, usually in the husband and wife, if you're not careful, unity will send you out to the baby department. You'll be shopping, getting things for the baby room, and you'll have to make a nursery. You have too much unity going on. Well, that's the way that God meant it to happen, and that's the way it happens. Unity brings about some wonderful things. When unity happens in the family of God, it brings about some wonderful things. Amen. What we call revival is simply nothing more than people worshiping God together in unity. It's not that God has to send a special time of revival. God is always wanting to move. Amen. The song said, God is on the move. On the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. God is always on the move. Amen. Even when He waits and sits still sometimes, as it were, He's still on the move. He's just waiting for us. It's like this. God is on the move. He's waiting for us to get in the groove where He can move. Amen. Family harmony, getting together. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. This beautiful flowing robe and this unity is like precious pouring perfume that flows down this special ointment, this special oil that was put upon Aaron's head. God told him exactly how to make it. And people say that you can send over there now and get some from the Holy Land. The problem is God said you're not supposed to make any like that. So if you try to copy it, you need to go back and read that scripture that God says you're not to make it. The person out here in the general world, they're not to make it. It's supposed to be a holy thing. It's to be made for holy purposes. It's not to be made to make commodity out of, to sell, to try to make money off of and get money from all the people around the world and say, we'll send you this special holy oil and if you put this oil on you, you'll be healed better than just any old oil. Well, that's not right. The scripture said anoint with oil. It doesn't have to be a special oil. A lot of these people make these special things. It's like water. Bottled water. Everybody goes crazy buying bottled water. I'm thinking, why do you have to buy something? You're already buying it. You pay the city for it every month. Or if you're in the country, you pay every once in a while to get those slicky things out of your water. Everybody's already buying water. You go out and you buy bottled water. This is special spring water. Yeah, it sprang right from the tap. And they put it in the bottle and they seal it up and they sell it to you and say, this is special spring water. Yeah, it sprang right from his imagination. Right out of your money pocket, into his pocket. That's where it sprung from. But this special oil that was put on Aaron as they anointed him in the high priest's office, this anointing oil. David said, He has anointed my head with oil, and my cup runs over. It will flow down upon you because you are anointed. You don't have to be a bishop. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a deacon. You don't have to have a high name or be an elder. Every one of you are anointed. 
You say, how do you know? Because you're born again. When you're born again, you're anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Even if you don't feel it, it's not because you feel it. You're not anointed because you feel it. You feel it because you're anointed. And you're anointed into the family of God. You're anointed in the kingdom of God. You're born again. That special flowing perfume that brings us all together as one. We're one in the bond of love, the song says. And it brings us together. It's like the ointment, the precious flowing and pouring perfume that went down upon Aaron's head, that flowed down on his beard, went down to the bottom of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, dew is that which is flourishing. Dew causes production, causes refreshing, it causes blessing. Dew, D-U-E, causes like the grass to be wet and to be refreshing. Many years went by and there were no rain on the earth. It didn't have to rain. God brought this dew and a mist that came up every evening and watered the face of the whole ground. God has always had a way to provide for His people. And even before the rains came, you know that rains came the first time they had rain? It was because of judgment, because of the flood. Rain is now considered a good thing, and it is, but eventually or initially it happened because of judgment. Rain came because of judgment. But the dew came because of God's blessing. There will be showers of blessing. God wants to bless you, not just with rain, but He wants to bless you with dew. He wants to anoint you. That dew that came upon Hermon. Hermon is considered the highest mountain in Israel. Some think it was that mountain. They climbed way up on that mountain, and Jesus was transfigured before them. And then the hills of Zion, the mountains of Zion, is that place, the sea of David, the mountain of Zion, a spiritual blessing. The dew that descended upon Hermon and upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. If you have eternal life today, you are blessed with the dew of heaven. If you have eternal life today, you're blessed with the blessing of God. It's something that many kings and many righteous men, Jesus said, have desired to look into. Even the angels desire to look into a lot of these things. You and I take it for granted. We enjoy the blessings of God every day. We enjoy this unity that brings us together. It's not a denominational thing. It's not a certain corporate thing. It's not a name thing that brings us together. It's the dew of heaven. It's the dew of God. When the dew fell in the 40-year wilderness travels, the children of Israel, the dew would fall, and they would go out there, and when the dew fell, lo and behold, there was a small little round thing, and they called it manna. Manhu is like Hebrew, manhu. In other words, what is that? That? What is it? They didn't know what it was. They called it manna. Manhu? What is that? Well, it's the blessing of God. God's dew falls upon your tent. God's blessing smiles upon your camp. God will bless you. He will bless you in your coming in. He will bless you in your going out. Praise God. It's like the preacher's child who they got on to for not saying the blessing. Johnny, why didn't you say the blessing? And he said, well, the Bible said God bless it going in and bless it coming out, so it's already blessed, praise God. And blessing coming in and blessing going out. The blessing of God, even life forevermore, it's a refreshing, everlasting blessing. There is a special blessing, and it's found in Numbers chapter 6, starting at verse 22. The Lord speaks to Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons. So this is a priestly blessing. When God blesses you, it is a priestly blessing. Why? Because He is our high priest. And you and I are princes and princesses of the Most High God. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are brought into the family of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 said we are part of a priesthood of believers. We are a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people and owned people to show forth the praises of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. He has brought us into His banqueting house and He has spread His banner of love over us. He has blessed us with the dew of heaven. His Son coming down from heaven 
condescending to men of low degree. He comes to give us life, and he comes to give us life abundantly. Speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee. That's provision. When God blesses you, he has provided already. Before the world was made, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and everything was empty and void, and before God even said, let there be light, he had already provided everything you and I would ever need. He makes provision for us. Do you know that God provided before this world began for you to be saved and healed, and everything that you would ever need is already provided, and all we had to do is just touch and tap in. Get your tablet, if you will. Get your phone, your spiritual phone, and tap into that screen of heaven. It's already there. All you got to do is just say, tap, tap. If you say, tap, tap, he'll say, rap, rap. Praise God. He'll give you that which he's provided for you. He's already provided it for you. He said, the Lord bless you and keep you. It's a blessing of provision. It's a blessing of protection. God will keep us. You say, well, why in the world do people get broken into? Why in the world do things happen even to Christian people? Could it be because we are not acknowledging the protection and preserving power of God? The scripture said, the Lord will be your shade on your right hand. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God will keep us. He will bless us. He will protect us. That's what it said right here. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. He will protect you. He will be your shade. He will be your comfort. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. He will protect you. The Lord make His face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. That is goodness and mercy. David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord will bless you to cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Goodness and mercy is following all around behind you. It's not bad, bad. It's good, good. It's not uncertain, uncertain. Fear, fear. It's goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Quit confessing what Fox says. You better watch a fox. Your fox is kind of foxy. They'll trick you out. You better watch that fox. Don't listen to fox. Don't listen to the fox. Listen to the lamb. Quit listening to the fox and listen to the lamb. Oh, shut up. Glory to God. Start listening to the lamb. The lamb will lead you in the right way. The lamb will be the shepherd. He will cause you to prosper. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. You'll have glory and peace. When his countenance is lifted up on you, that's the glory of God. He's lifting his countenance up upon you. It's not a virus chasing you. It's goodness and mercy chasing you. It's not an epidemic chasing you. It's goodness and mercy chasing you. It's all around you. You say, well, brother so-and-so and and sister so-and-so, that doesn't change the word of God. It still says that God's goodness and mercy will shine upon me. His glory will rise upon me. Rise and shine the scripture says for the Lord the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee his glory is rising on you he will give you his peace Jesus said I leave you my peace I give you my peace not like the world gives but I have overcome the world they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them They will put my name upon them. How do you put your name? Because you say, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. They will put my name upon them, and I will bless them. Jesus said, in my name you will do this. In my name you will believe. In my name you will cast out devils. In my name you will be protected. In my name you will lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. In my name you gather together in my name. You worship my name. You praise my name. Put my name upon them, and I will bless them. Unity is not something you have to try to have. I've heard people preach and preachers preach. Try to have unity. Now you don't have to try to have it, but you have to try to keep it. Endeavor to keep unity. Ephesians 4 verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is unity in the Spirit. The Spirit brings us together in one. There's not three spirits or ten spirits. 
I know the book of the Revelation talks about the seven spirits of God, but it means the completeness of the Spirit of God. There's one Spirit of God. There's one evil spirit, although there are many little evil spirits, but it's really all one evil spirit. And it comes from one big evil devil. There's a lot of little devils that comes from one big evil devil. But the one spirit that we're concerned about is the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's unity in the Spirit. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. That is, don't allow anything to undo, to hurt, to hinder that unity of the Spirit. Amen. Because you might look funny and sometimes might talk funny and might act funny and you might smell funny, but the thing is, you're my brother, you're my sister, you're born again, you're part of the family of God, and oh, I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. Washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood, Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. And I'm not worthy to be here, but thank God, I do belong. You feel like, well, I just don't belong. I just don't know. I want to keep going to this church, but I just don't know. Well, what you need to know, you just need to get your face out of the face, out of the book, and get your face in the book, and start knowing what you know already, and let it stop being covered up by what somebody else is trying to tell you. And go by what you know anyway and endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, stayed on me. You have to have your mind stayed on Jehovah. Because there's 50, 1100 other things in this world that will try to get your mind off of Jehovah. But you have to have your mind stayed on Jehovah. That's right. Because there is one body. There's not two or three bodies. There's one body. It doesn't matter whether it's the Baptist, the Pentecostal, the Methodist, the Presbyterian, whatever it is, as long as Jesus Christ is Lord, as long as you're born again, there is one body. And there is one Spirit. He's the same Holy Spirit. He's the same Holy Spirit in the Baptist as He is in the Pentecostal. Some people might want a little more of Him than others, but He's still the same Holy Spirit. He's baptized us all into the same body of Christ. And we're all in the body of Christ. And when you kick against your brother and you cause problems against your brother, it's like you take your other foot and stomp your toe. You're hurting your own toe. You say, well, I won't hurt that toe anymore. I'll stomp on the other one. Well, it still hurts whether you stomp on the right one or the left one. It still hurts. And when we hurt each other, we hurt our brother. We hurt myself. Nobody wants to hurt their own self. Archie Camelon, he all said, it hurts when I do this. He said, well, don't do that then. Nobody wants to hurt their self. One spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. We have one hope. All of us have the same hope. Peter talks about it, that hope that's laid up for you in heaven. Unfailed, unfading, undefiled, this laid up there waiting for you in heaven. We've got something to go to heaven for. We've got a lot of things to go to heaven for, but that one hope is laid up there. It's reserved for you in heaven. Nobody will bother it. It'll be reserved and kept for you till you get there. We need to be a little more excited about what's laid up for us in heaven. That hope that's laid up. Hope is future. Faith is now. We have faith now. We have hope, but hope is not realized yet. Scripture in the Old Testament said, Hope defers, makes the heart sick. The heart is sick because you don't have all that hope yet. You've got hope, but you haven't had it fulfilled yet. Heaven is a hope. It's sure hope, but it's a hope. We haven't gotten there yet. It's a hope. It's laid up for us there. We have one hope of our calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. See the oneness, the unity? One Lord. It's not two or three lords. It's one Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of heaven. He's Lord of earth. He's Lord of the church. He's Lord in the sea. He's Lord in the mountains. I know God is God. Sister Alice sings. He always will be God. He's God everywhere. He's Lord. Paul went through great detail to tell us he's Lord of the Jew. He's Lord of the Gentile. 
And we say it like this, He's Lord of red and yellow, black and white, and He's all Lord, and we're all precious in His sight. Amen. One faith. It's not no Baptist faith, Pentecostal faith, Methodist faith. It's the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Jesus said, I have faith in God. If you say to this mountain, be removed, and he goes on, and whatever you ask in prayer, believing, have faith in God. One faith, one Lord, one baptism, one faith in that baptism. Jesus said, are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? He said, you will be. It's one baptism. You know, there are a lot of baptisms. Paul talked about being baptized for the dead. He talked about being baptized in the sea under Moses. Well, they went through the Red Sea. They were all baptized in that way. We have baptism and immersion in water. And some people sprinkle on top of the head. Little devil do you glory. Hallelujah. You know, there's all kind of baptism like that. But the real baptism, there's one baptism. We're all baptized into the body of Christ. And therefore, we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But there's one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. He's the same God and Father. He's the God in Malachi, the Jew. He's the God in Matthew of the Gentile, the Mark, and all the other, the New Covenant. He's the God of everyone. Not everyone belongs to Him as a child of God, but there's one God and Father of all. Above all, through all, in you all. Paul was a southerner. You all. He said y'all. You all. He is in you all. And to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We all have experienced the grace and power of God. Thank God the grace of God. Sin abounded, but grace did much more abound. Amen. Growth ensures unity. How do you have and maintain unity? You grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4.11, He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. That's your five-fold ministry. God gave us the five-fold ministry, everything that we would need in the church to succeed. God does not want us to fail. He never fails. We fail sometimes, but He does not want us to. He wants us to succeed. And He gave us a well-rounded, well-balanced, five-fold ministry, everything that we need to succeed. And there are three things that this five-fold ministry does for the perfecting or completing of the saints. You have this ministry, wonderful ministry that God gives us. And it may be all God's children. It may be instruments of shining hope. It may be all kind of names and ministries under that. But all of it falls under the umbrella of the five-fold ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And you have all these ministries that make up that. But he wants us to be complete for the perfecting, the completing of the saints, for the work of the ministry. That's what the ministry is. Some people don't like ministry. If you don't like ministry, you don't like the work of God because he said for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That is, we're built up. He gives us the ministry that we have to build us and lift us up and cause us to go out and do the Great Commission. Amen. Till we all come, that's what the purpose is. This is what God wants us to happen till we all get there. In other words, till we all come in the unity of the faith. The faith that unites us together. Paul talks about the common faith of me and you. That unites us together, together in one. The unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or complete man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All of us are to grow up and to look more and more like Jesus. The little kid song said, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask, to be like Him. In Jesus' high priestly prayer, John chapter 17, He prayed that we would be one, even as He and the Father are one. If we go against unity... We're going against the very prayer of Jesus Christ Himself. He prayed that we would be one. He would pray that we would be united together as one, even as He and the Father are one. To cooperate with unity is to enforce and fortify His prayer for us. And you have to remember that He prays 
for us as our heavenly high priest daily. Jesus prays for you daily. There's not a day that goes by. There's not an hour that goes by that Jesus Christ does not pray for you. He mentions you before His Father, before the throne. And when the Father and the Son, when He looks at His hands, what does He see? He sees those same nail scars that the disciples saw when He revealed to them His hands and His side. And when He looks at His hands, He sees those scars. When He looks at His hands, He sees us. He tells Israel in the Old Testament, you are graven on the palms of my hands. Well, how much more is that with you and I that he was crucified and died for us? When he looks at his hands, he sees us. And he remembers us before the throne of God in heaven. He intercedes on our behalf. He prays for us daily. He wants us to do well. He wants us to do good. He wants us to be good. He wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to be united. He wants us to be one. He wants us to reach the world. He wants us to do what he tells us to do and he prays to that end every day he prays for you individually the song said when he was on the cross i was on his mind and he prays for us he prays for you he's pulling for you he's not against you he's not throwing boulders down on your head to judge you with every little thing you do but he's pulling for you he's praying for you every day jesus christ himself the one that died for you. Do you think he'd die and give his blood for you and then go up in heaven and be against you? That's not what he does. He prays for you every day. There's not a day that goes by. There's not an hour that goes by. There's not a minute that goes by that he does not pray for you. In heaven, they don't have time like we have now. There's no time, no limits. He just prays for you all the time. Since there's no night up there, you don't have to worry about day or night when you're asleep. In the middle of the night, when you have troubles, tossing to and fro, you don't have to worry about that. Jesus is praying for you in a land where we'll never grow old, in a land where the sun never goes down, in a land where they don't even need the sun to shine because the S-O-N is always shining. He's always shining in that place where we're going one day. Unity, step up. Hallelujah. Step up to the unity plate. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in church. We're glad that you bring us together as one. We're glad that you have united us together in your name. We praise you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that brings us together as one, sends us out in your name. We thank you, Lord, for it. I pray that many sons and daughters would be brought into the family of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. You have been listening to a sermon entitled, Step Up to the Unity Plate. The way you do that is to make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you know Him as your Lord today. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.